Hey YouTube, Andrew here, a guy with a tractor. Today video we're going to talk about PTO shaft maintenance. I got a bush hog last year, middle of mowing season, or towards the end of it. Um, it's a Frontier 2060, it's the five foot um, Frontier John Deere model. Um, I got it when I got this tractor and before the end of the season I think I put right around 30 hours on it. Um, I've taken the shaft off and had it inside all winter. Um, it's getting springtime, starting to get mowing season, so I wanna get the, get the PTO shaft all maintained, fixed up, everything ready to go for mowing season. I take it off because purely in the wintertime, I don't want it sitting out there and just rain, freeze, everything else. Anything, water get down in the barrens, freeze, bust, so I take my PTO shafts off on the implements that aren't stored inside and keep the shafts themselves inside. So I've got it in here. We're going to take it apart. I've never done this with this one. So we're going to take it apart, grease it, put it back together and show you how it's done. If you like this type of video, subscribe, click the bell notification for updates on future videos and pound that like button. Thank you. Okay, the first step of doing this maintenance is to get the PTO shaft off of the implement. Um, if it's a slip clutch or a shear pin, either one, there's going to be a most likely a bolt through it. Um, some of them I've seen actually come off the same way they go on and off the tractor. Um, mine's a slip clutch. It's got a, a bolt that goes through the, the shaft on the gearbox. You pull it off and it comes right off. Alright, the next thing to do is actually slip these two units apart and all you have to do is slide them apart. And now we're left with each individual piece. You can see all the, the grease and the metal shavings and a little bit of everything that's on that. So that's what we're going to take care of and get out of there get these covers off and get these cleaned up. All right, so on each end of one of these, where you see these meet, you'll see a little screw. Um, these only have one screw on each side, so we'll just pull them out. It's into plastic, so not anything extremely hard to take out. We'll get those off. Don't have one of these little metal pans. Throw our screws in it. Works good. Now that we have those separated, this piece should twist on here. Come on. All right. So after we took the the screw out, these little white tabs, you can see there's little cutouts. You have to turn this piece and get those little white tabs to line up. Um, this one was a little a little stubborn and took a it was the biggest flat object I had and put against right here and give it some love taps and it was able to spin that around not too difficult. So once you get all those around and lined up which this one don't want to come out. Sorry if I'm in the camera there. These others are free. This one is going to take a little bit of persuasion probably. Just like that. And it slips out. And the cover comes off in your left with just the, the shaft itself. All right, so now that we've got the guard off, this little this little ring right here, those little plastic tabs, I'm going to wipe some of this excess grease off here. We're going to get all this cleaned up and make it look presentable. This little ring here, 
supposed to... There we go. Oh, that's not the right one. If you spin it, there's an opening. It's not doing it because it's down. You spin it and get it off. There's one side that's that's open and you get this little this little groove out of that groove right there and it comes it slides off all right so now that we got all the guarding off i'm just going to take some paper towels and get in here and clean all this grease that's caked up on here and get it off and make sure there's no damage or anything to it like that so let me get this cleaned up and then i'll bring it back in and show you what it looks like all right so follow the same steps of getting the cover off the first one i did was the the implement side this one is the tractor side um i don't know if you can see that or not but this thing is covered in grease and you see that metal shavings um already stuck one in my pinky um, you can see right down through here, let me move the camera just a little bit, where the light's hitting it. This little edge is covered in little burrs. Um, apparently there wasn't grease, didn't get in there or something, it was wearing, wearing a little bad. So we're going to get that cleaned up, um, probably trim, sand some of these little burrs off just lightly. And get this cleaned up and get a good coat of grease on this one before we put them back together okay so we got all of our our shaft cleaned up um, this one that was caked in the uh, PTO or excuse me in metal shavings um, took some degreaser to it cleaned it off got all those other extra metal shavings off there I did take a little file trimmed up a few burrs on this where this is all boogered up and also on the um, on the far end here, on the outside, I took a file and and smoothed it up so where this the other piece mates up and does it. On the outside shaft, um, it looked just like the inside of this other one over here. So. I needed to get all that grease and stuff out of there. So I stood it up, took a can of brake cleaner, sprayed down in here, got that real looking real good and clean. Um, as far as these ends, everything, I just wiped till least down with paper towels. Cleaned inside the universal joints a little bit. This one looks cleaner than this one because this one got all the um, brake cleaner and stuff sprayed down on it. It's okay though. This one, I got the majority of it out and was able to look at everything and make sure everything's good. As far as the PTO attachment, um, this one's still working good. I haven't had any issues with it. Everything works good with it, so I'm not going to pull this snap ring and disassemble that right now. Um, if it gives me any problems later, I might do that. And then, so right now, we're going to get this all greased back up and put the covers back on and get all this slid back together and get it ready to put back onto the tractor or excuse me the bush hog and then i'm going to make a video a separate video on how to actually slip the clutch to make sure your slip clutch is working properly and being able to protect your pto system so let me get this grease back up and i'll show you putting it back together So one other little thing I did before I put this back together is I cleaned out in here where this uh, this grease circ right here is. Um, inside that grease is where that little white ring fits around here and allows your PTO shaft to actually spin freely inside the guard. So I cleaned all the excess grease off. Um, Cleaned out this little plastic zerk. It's not like a regular zerk. It don't have a little ball bearing in it. 
I mean, we'll take a piece of wire or something, stick through there, make sure it's good and, and cleaned out so you can get grease back down in there into this area on your PTO shaft. So the first step of reassembling is to put our little rings back on and slide back down. Remember how these come off and what direction they're facing? Um, have to stamp a little picture of it with your phone or something. That way you can remember when it goes time to put them back together of how they how they go on there. They slip on there fairly simple. So with reassembling this, I'm going to take this inner shaft here and I'm going to put some gloves on and give this thing a liberal coat of grease on the actual shaft itself so it gets good and greased because once I put the guard back on, I'm not going to be able to access this. So we're going to put the grease on and get that smeared on. I'm going to set this one out of the way because things are going to get messy. Um, if you had like a, like a tub of grease for like wheel bearings or something like that, you could just grab some with a hand or something. I don't have that. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way. We're just going to squirt some on there. And then we'll slide it back together. That should be decent enough. all this a good coat all the way down here because we did degrease this so there's no the paints wore off so we don't want it rusting so we want a good liberal coat on there to make sure that the outside of this where it's mating up with that other one doesn't rust and so now that we have that all Greased up. I'll just lay that right there. And remember on these shields, which one goes to the tractor. Um, it even says right there towards the tractor, and that's that end of it. So we'll have to do this a little backwards here because I don't want to grease on my other hand. So we're going to slide this back together. Now that I've got that together, I'm going to get rid of this greasy glove. So now comes the fun part, lining these grooves back up. And they went together a lot easier than they come apart. So now we got to get that spun around these two pieces to spin back around and lock itself in. And we're gonna do that on both of them. On the implement side, on the female side of the shaft, I'm not gonna grease the outside. Um, I'm just gonna put the, the shield back on that and we won't have to grease it. We'll grease a little bit on the inside of it um, where this is gonna slide in. But the reason we put grease all over this is so it goes down the inside of the other one. So let me get these twisted back on and both put back together and then I'll show you the other lubrication that we're going to do. All right, so remember taking these apart, I had to drive this. Um, once it slid back down and your little white ears come through, after everything's cleaned up, you'll be able to just take this and twist it by hand and you can feel it'll kind of sit there and you can line that little little screw hole back up. And I'm gonna put that screw back in to secure the guard on. Just like that. Might not have been exactly lined up, but you're just screwing two pieces of plastic together there. That way this piece don't slip from this and allow it to come off. Okay, so we got it reassembled. Now we're going to 
while it's off the tractor this is a great time to get in here and grease this little grease circ which this needs to be done periodically get it in there make sure it's locked on and give it some good grease until you see it coming out of the U joints. All right, so it's coming out of the U joints good in there. I give it a little extra because I did put all that degreaser in there and I wanted to make sure I got all that out. And then we're going to give it a couple squeezes in that ring there to make sure that the, the PTO shaft does spin on the actual shaft itself. And then anytime I'm greasing, I come back and clean up any excess. I do run the lock and lube system. So there's not much cleanup on the Zerks usually. These plastic ones don't seal off as good as the metal ones. But it's still not like running one without that lock and lube system. That was some of the best money I've ever spent. Because if you do a lot of greasing, you will need it. And right now I'm just getting the excess that squirted out of the U-joints. Um, I don't like big blobs in there because then they sling on everything and get everywhere. So we're going to do the exact same thing to the tractor end. We're going to grease that grease zert and grease the, the shield zert. And then we'll slide this thing back together. One other place I like to lube is the inner shield, the outside of it, just to keep it, it makes it slide a little bit easier. I don't lube the whole thing. I lube just a little bit here. That way it's not, outside's not showing. Um, what I'll do with that is I'll just take a little bit, squirt on my finger, and rub a little bit around this shaft here. Should have put gloves on. Just like that, and that'll help this whole this whole assembly slide in and out a little bit better. Alright. Now all that's left to do is slide these bad boys together and we will be done. Okay, and there you go. That's how to disassemble your PTO shaft, clean it, maintain it, put it back together. The only other place I'll grease is in here. I'll put a little coating of grease in here before I slide it back onto the implement. That way it is, when I go to take it off next year, it's not rusted on there because these are bare metal surfaces. So when the weather gets pretty and it's not raining a monsoon outside, I will get this thing hooked back up and make the video on how to slip the clutch and actually putting this thing back on the, the implement. Okay, so if you're still here at this point in the video, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope maybe give you the confidence to tackle this project by yourself. In hindsight, I wish I had done this the day I got this mower. After seeing all the shavings, I think they, when they cut this shaft, I don't know if it was the dealer or the manufacturer that cut the shaft. I don't think they cleaned any of the, the shavings out from when they cut it to length for. So in hindsight, if you get a shaft from a dealer that is already cut, it wouldn't hurt to at least pull the two pieces apart and make sure that it's not full of, of metal shavings and stuff. Um, this one is wore pretty good. I don't know how long it will actually hold up, um, seeing the amount of shavings that are actually in there. Um, just a little word of wisdom. Check them before you, uh, you go mow 30 hours with them. I did take it apart a couple times last year real quick and just throw some grease on it. Um, didn't really inspect it, taking the shields off and inspecting it like I just did. But hindsight's 2020. So, my next video is going to be putting this on the tractor, or the bush hog, 
um, installing it back and slipping the, uh, the clutch, getting that ready to make sure all that's in operation. So if you want to see that video, make sure you're subscribed and click that bell notification and pound that like button on this video because if you're still here, I know you liked it. Thank you and have a blessed day.